First of all, this is my new t-shirt. Um, help set an expectation with your lady friends or male friends, whichever your preference is. Um, the link to my shop is below. You guys should get one. But today we're talking about taking rolling shots. Uh, rolling shots of your car, your motorcycle, your six-legged horse. Whatever it is that you've just purchased and you've decided, I need to portrait this baby. And the iPhone photo I took at the back of the KFC parking lot is just not cutting the mustard. Those of you that follow me on Instagram will know that I'm a big fan of rolling shots because it really brings out the beauty of vehicles, you know, to see them in their, basically their natural habitat, rolling along the road, looking awesome. So, how do we take a rolling shot? Well, it's pretty straightforward actually. Um, it all comes down to shutter speed and focal length. Let's talk about shutter speed first. You're going to need a camera where you can adjust the shutter speed. Uh, and that requires you to have a mode switch on your camera and it doesn't necessarily need to be a big expensive SLR like I've got here. Uh, a lot of smaller cameras also have the ability to manually manage the shutter speed. What is shutter speed? Well shutter speed of course is how quickly the shutter opens and closes. And there's always three variables in any photograph uh, for getting the correct exposure. The first one being shutter speed, how long the shutter stays open and so how much light it lets in. The aperture, which is how much light is let through the hole uh, while the shutter is open. And the ISO, which is how sensitive the sensor that the light is hitting is to that light. And why shutter speed? Because we want to set the shutter speed just slow enough that it shows the movement of the wheels turning and the background moving behind the car, but fast enough that the car itself stays crisp and clear. So it gives the image the impression of movement, which is the key to a beautiful rolling shot. The second variable on a great rolling shot is the focal length. Uh, how much zoom your camera has zooming into the car you're taking a photo of. Uh, and it's very important because a decent amount of focal length gets rid of any distortion. What I'm talking about with distortion is with a very wide angle camera, uh, cars tend to roll around and distort the shape. And here's a couple of examples of that where where the, cam the car is so close to the camera and the camera is a wide angle, the car looks misshapen. Generally speaking, uh, distortion starts to disappear at what is the equivalent of a 50 millimeter full frame camera. Uh, that is about a 35 millimeter on a crop frame camera. So you wanna have a lens that is a, a decent focal length uh, and, and not too much because as soon as you go too far with your focal length, then the car you're taking the photo of has to be so far away that you'll never find a road where there's that sort of distance between you and the car that you're taking a photo of. So I'd recommend anywhere between say 24 to 100 millimeters and you're probably gonna be taking most of your photos in the 50 millimeter range. And the third option if you really wanna get fancy is having one of these. Uh, this is a circular polarizing filter uh, and it does two things for us in this case, possibly three. Uh, the first one is uh, that it reduces the glare, the light, the, the sharp lights uh, reflecting off the car, especially if it's a sunny day. Uh, secondly, it allows you to see through the windows of the car. Here's a demonstration. If I put my camera in front of my car and have Becky inside it, as I turn the circular polarizing filter, you can see she suddenly comes into view. Uh, so the circular polarizing filter allows you to get through the glare of uh, windows and windscreens, uh, allowing you to see inside the car. But more importantly, it, uh, it removes some of the, the bright glare on cars, especially when you're filming in bright light. The third and perhaps less likely to be used in this case is that it acts as a light filter as well, reducing the amount of light coming into the camera. So if you are very clever with your camera, you can get a slow shutter speed and a wide aperture. What wide apertures tend to do for cameras is they tend to blur the background of the item that's in focus. But it's not as important in rolling shots because you're going to get the blurred background generally because of the low shutter speed anyway. So what shutter speed are we going to use? Well, we're going to put the camera in TV mode, uh, which is shutter priority, which means it's, you set the speed of the shutter and the camera does everything else automatically for you. Uh, and the shutter speed we're going to use is 1 80th of a second or up to 1 20th or 1 25th of a second, depending on the camera you have. Uh, 1 80th. Uh, gets a beautiful blur, um, but you get less photos that are keepers because uh, it's such a slow speed that any movement in the camera is generally going to be shown on the rest of the rest of the image. Uh, 1 25th, you get a lot more keepers, you get a lot more shots which actually work out, but uh, the wheels in the background aren't quite as blurred. So you want to try uh, settings between those. Some people go to more extremes, go down to 1 60th. Um, uh, 
Uh, but you're really getting, uh, <laughs> having a lot of trouble getting great photos at that speed. So anywhere between 1 and 1 25th are uh, speeds that I recommend and today we're going to try both. Uh, next is how do you uh, take the photos? Well, uh, if you're fancy like me, you can mount a camera on the side of the car and put a timer on it so the camera takes a photo every two seconds or so. What's great about having a camera mounted on the side of the car like this is that it allows the camera to get really low uh, and really low shots are quite effective because you can see a bit of, bit of light from under the car and it's, uh, it's a better angle basically. You can see here the difference between a low shot and a regular shot you can see it's quite effective having a low shot. But we're also going to do it the old fashioned way. We're going to have um, Becky hold the camera and my friend Brian drive the car. Uh, and Becky's just going to take shots at different focal lengths as we drive along the highway. So here we go. Here's the first shots. Becky's going to take some photos out of the window. And the camera stuck to the side of the car is going to take some shots as well. We're fortunate today that it's a bit of an overcast day as well. You might think that a, a, a cloudless sunny day might be perfect for this type of shot, but it's not. You know, the sharp shadows that you get from full sunlight make it very difficult to get a great shot. Overcast certainly produces better photos. The other thing we're fortunate about, of course, is that it's fall, so we're getting the nice leaf colours in the background. So here we are. Uh, we're getting some great shots. And this is the first time Becky's ever taken this type of shot. And as you can see, they're coming out great. Just because we've got the camera set up correctly, uh, with the correct shutter speeds between 80 to 125 as I said and she's varying the focal length uh, within the parameters that I told her and you know even though she's had no experience in this she's getting some great shots here and the same can be said of the camera down below. The camera down below doesn't have the polarizing filter on it so I think the the shots that Becky's taking are actually coming out better uh, but either way the shots are looking great and it really is this easy to get such beautiful shots. You do need of course friends or family to help drive the car uh, so you can take the photos and someone else drive your car or vice versa. But either way, it's pretty easy once you know the settings, you know how to set up the camera um, to get beautiful shots like this. Mm. So if you have any questions about taking rolling shots, uh, be sure to email me if you wish. Um, but yeah, just remember, you want to set your shutter speed priority um, between 80 to 125. Uh, and you want to keep your focal length from, you know, 35 millimeters up to about 85 millimeters. And you'll get beautiful shots like these. So... Thanks for watching everyone, I hope this has been helpful, bye then.